Um, hello, you're watching Armando Hasurungan Biology and Medicine videos. Uh, please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group. For the latest videos, visit Facebook Armando Hasurungan, like, ask questions, answer questions, and please post some interesting things such as your artworks. And you can also please change the settings to original or HD so you can have better graphics uh, to see the videos. To see this video, which is on fatty acid degradation, for example. Um, yes. So in the previous video, we learned how fatty acids were transported from the cytosol, where it was synthesized, to the mitochondria. Now, in the mitochondria, fatty acids can undergo fatty acid oxidation when we need energy from fatty acids in the form of acetyl-CoA. Fatty acid degradation, or full oxidation, comes in three stages. Stage 1, stage 2, and stage 3. Stage 1 is when a long fatty acid chain, a long fatty acid CoA, such as palmitol CoA, a 16 carbon fatty acid, can undergo beta oxidation, which will essentially cleave two, two carbons at a time from the long chain fatty acid. So in this case, palmitol CoA, which is a 16 carbon, through beta oxidation will make eight acetyl CoAs. Okay, now during the beta oxidation process, electron carriers will be produced, such as NADH and FADH2. Let's leave it there for a second. Now let's go back to the 8 acetyl CoAs. Now the 8 acetyl CoAs can then go on to the next stage, stage 2, by, um, by entering the Krebs cycle. Because if you remember, acetyl CoA enters the Krebs cycle from pyruvate. Same thing here. And from the Krebs cycle, NADH and FADH2 are also produced, which leads to the final stage, stage 3. So in stage 3 is about the electron carriers. F NADH and FADH2 gets fed into the electron transport chain to produce more ATP from ADP and inorganic phosphate here. So to produce more ATP just like cellular respiration. But what this video is actually more concentrating on is on stage 1, which is beta oxidation. So let's have a closer look. So beta oxidation, what is it? And why beta? Why not alpha, for example? Well, if we take a single fatty acyl CoA, such as palmitol CoA, which is a 16 carbon fatty acyl CoA, um, degradation of fatty acids begin in, at the carboxyl end. So here is a carboxyl end here. Now the nomenclature of fatty acids using Greek alphabets begin with the first carbon which does not include the carboxyl carbon. So here for example is alpha, beta, gamma and delta. So beta, beta. In beta oxidation, we want to oxidize beta. We want to add oxygen to beta carbon, this beta carbon here. So, so through several reactions, this same palmitol CoA structure will look like this. And here is a carboxyl end still. And what is different is that the beta carbon is now bonded to oxygen, so it has been oxidized. Nice, that's a good spelling of oxygen. Um, so next, if we add a CoA group to the structure, we can have the beta carbon bind to the CoA group, which will release the alpha carbon and the carboxyl end. And this is acyl-CoA, what's um, split out. So, but seeing we release two carbons, it means that this structure is not a 16 carbon fatty acyl CoA anymore. It's a 14 carbon fatty acyl, which also means that this is no longer alpha, this is no longer beta, gamma, and delta. Here is the new carboxyl end, which means here is a new alpha carbon and beta carbon. And so beta oxidation can continue on with this 14 carbon. So from 16 carbon fatty acid from the very beginning, if we remove two carbons at a time, we will get, we will get eight acyl coas So let's go back to the map. We, start, we will start with palmitol CoA. 
just a point to make, fatty acid degradation is the reverse of synthesis. So if you remember, synthesis was condensation, reduction, dehydration, and reduction again. Well, if we go backwards, it's oxidation, hydration, oxidation, and finally cleavage. Okay, so palmitoCoA, it will oxidize first to trans-2-enol-CoA by the enzyme acyl-CoA dehydrogenase. FAD is reduced to FADH2. Next, trans-2-enol-CoA will then be hydrated to L-beta-hydroxyacyl-CoA by the enzyme enol-CoA hydratase, because you're adding water to it. Now, L-beta-hydroxyacyl-CoA um, will then be oxidized to beta-ketoacyl-CoA. Uh, beta beta keto acyl coa by the enzyme beta hydroxy acyl coa dehydrogenase nad beta hydroxy acyl coa dehydrogenase now nad is reduced to nadh h so from the beginning we had oxidation hydration and oxidation again which means that finally um, beta acyl beta keto acyl coa will cleave two carbons off forming 14 carbon fatty acyl CoA called myristoyl CoA. The CoA was obtained in the reaction. And also the second carbon, the, also the two carbons with CoA that broke off is acyl CoA. It forms acyl CoA. So that was how we formed one acyl CoA. But myristoyl CoA can still undergo beta oxidation six more times to form more acyl CoAs. So as we have learned, Fatty acid degradation is the reverse of fatty acid synthesis. So whereas fatty acid synthesis is condensation, reduction, dehydration and reduction, fatty acid degradation is backwards of this. So oxidation, hydration, oxidation and cleavage. I hope that makes sense. I hope that was good. Um, next we will look at acetone, how ketone bodies are formed, sorry, and how ketone bodies serve as important fuel reserves in times of starvation. Thank you. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you all.